So Apple announced its new M4 processor a couple of weeks ago, interestingly being used in an iPad Pro rather than appearing in a MacBook, MacBook Air or something like that. Now I didn't do a video at the time of the launch because I didn't want to just repeat the information that uh, Apple were giving in the presentation, you know, repeat the press release. I wanted to find out a few things about this processor. I found them out and today I want to have a look at them. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's go through some of the highlights of the CPU part of the new M4 processor. The M4 has up to 10 core, and we're going to talk about that, up to 10 core, uh, consisting of up to four performance cores and six efficiency cores. So that's an upgrade from the M3, which was four plus four. It's got the next generation core features, including improved branch prediction with wider decode and execution engines for the performance cores and a deeper execution engine for the efficiency cores. We'll dive into that. What does all that mean? And both types of cores also feature enhanced next generation ML accelerators. Now this is a really, really important point and we're gonna dive into that. That's why I put it here in red because we have to understand that. And then Apple are quoting performance differences and we'll look at the performance according to Geekbench. Okay, so this is how Apple presented the uh, the new chip. So four performance cores with approved branch prediction and so on. Six efficiency cores giving 10 in total. However, we have to notice this up to 10 core. You aren't guaranteed to get a 10 core CPU and Apple doesn't make it obvious. In fact, I know somebody who actually went online, bought the new iPad and then when they got it, it was a nine core one. They were pretty disappointed. They're actually gonna return it and order the next one up. Now, the good thing is that both variants have a boosted clock speed of 4.4 gigahertz. That's the same if you get the nine core or the 10 core and both are built using TSMC second generation three nanometer process node. So what's actually happening here, when you do dig down into the specifications, you don't get shown it on the page where you're buying online, but you get it if you do dig into the specifications. Basically, there is a nine core CPU with three performance cores and six efficiency cores. If you go for 256 gigs of storage, 512 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM. Now that's quite limiting because you're not going to get, you know, 16 gigs of RAM and maybe only 256. Maybe you don't want more than 256, you know, it's an iPad. I know people use them more like, de you know, laptops and desktops nowadays, but you know, this is quite limiting. Whereas if you want the 10 core version, you have to go with one terabyte of storage and get the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So most people, even if they go with a half a terabyte of storage and they're just gonna have eight gigs of RAM and the nine core CPU. So do beware when you make your buying choice. Okay, so it talked about an improved CPU microarchitecture. Remember microarchitecture is how the chip is internally designed. Each chip, M1, M2, M3, the internals are different. Of course, it's still using it's an ARM based chip, so it's ARM's architecture, but the micro architecture, what's going on the inside is different in every chip. So improved branch prediction, this is for both calls, or branch prediction, basically when you have these pipelines, and I've got videos on this, about this here on this channel, you've got these instructions going down the pipeline, they're going through the decode phase, they're getting along the pipeline, getting ready to execute, and then at some point, they find out that what's in the pipeline is wrong because a branch has taken the software somewhere else, and you have to empty the, the pipeline out and then start again and that causes a performance uh, blip because you've had to empty out the pipeline and start again. So if you can improve the branch prediction then you basically you get better performance. So fewer branch mispredictions means greater performance and that's what Apple are saying they've done in both of these uh, core designs. Now wider decode and execution engines for the performance cord, well wider pipelines means more instructions per cycle that the CPU can fetch, decode, issue, execute and retire. That's the whole kind of outline of a modern superscalar uh, C, uh, pipeline. Uh, and so what they're basically saying is that there's a wider decode, that means more instructions can be decoded. So they come in from the fetch stage and then they can handle more of them at the front end. Uh, more of them simultaneously. And then towards the back end, a wider executional engine allows for the CPU to execute more instructions concurrently, and that improves instruction level parallelism. And that's what they've done in this uh, new processor. Now they haven't done that in the efficiency cores. Instead of the efficiency cores, they've got a deeper execution engine, 
which basically means there are more pipeline. The pipeline is longer and that probably means there's a higher clock speed because you can bump up the clock speed and because each clock cycle now is, is there's more clock cycles happening but you don't have to achieve so much in each clock cycle because you split it up into smaller chunks of work. So generally when you make the pipeline longer you're actually bumping up the clock speed. So I'd imagine that these new efficiency cores have got a higher clock speed. Now here's the key ticket, enhanced next gen ML accelerators. Now these are in the CPU. Do you go back and look at Apple's presentation, look at their diagram. These are in the CPU, they're not part of the NPU. The NPU is a separate thing. They talk about the NPU separately, talk about its performance, talk about how it's better than previous NPUs in the Apple range, but this is in the CPU. Now why? what does it mean now to have an ML accelerator in the CPU? Well what we're talking about is the scalable matrix extension, specifically the second version of it, which is basically how you can do matrix multiplication in hardware. Of course, we've come a long way from, you know, back in the day when a, even a floating point unit to do floating point numbers was an optional thing. And, and even today they're optional in microcontrollers and so on. Now we're talking about not even scalar uh, operations, uh, but we're talking about matrix operations. So you can actually do in the CPU multiplication of matrices and other matrix uh, kind of operations. And that's good for scientific simulations, computer vision and machine learning. And this is the point now that we've got these ML accelerators which allow things to happen in the CPU by allowing these matrices to be manipulated, multiplied and so on. Now the key is that SME2 is part of the ARM 9.4 architecture. Okay, so it's ARM V9.4 and it's not available in ARM V8. So this means that this is a new CPU from uh, Apple. They've redesigned both cores, as you can see, because both cores have got that uh, improved uh, uh, branch prediction. Both cores have had their pipelines changed and both cores contain the ML accelerators. And this is what you do when you change architecture, both sets of cores have to be the same because that means that jobs can move from one to the other and they can actually, they don't say, oh no, I haven't got the ML accelerator on this on this CPU core and then it just dies. They can, the, the jobs can switch from the performance cores to the efficiency cores because they functionality wise, they both do exactly the same thing. So this is Apple's first ARM V9 CPU. Okay, let's dive into the Geekbench 6 scores. I've got both the single threaded scores here and the multi-threaded scores. As you would expect, the single threaded score for both the nine core version and the 10 core version is better than what you find in the M3. In this particular case, a MacBook Air. I wanted something with passive cooling. The M2, which you found in the iPad Pro, the M1 that you found in the iPad Pro, we can see the progression here of the single th uh, threaded scores. And in terms of the multi-threaded scores, the 10 core version is better than the nine core version. And we can see that the 10 and nine core versions are better than the eight core versions of the M3, the M2, and the M1, as you'd expect. And you can see here how the M1, the M2, and the M3 have increased that multi-threaded score performance as you go up through the generations. However, it's important to note that each of these processes is running at faster and faster clock speeds. So the original M1 was running at around 3.2 gigahertz, whereas the latest M4 is running at 4.4 gigahertz. So there's obviously gonna be more performance when you crank up the clock speed. So if we now actually divide the single threaded score by the clock speed, we see a very, very interesting thing. So trying to eliminate the clock speed or bring them all down to the same clock speed, what we see is that for the M1, the M2 and the M3, really the single threaded scores were very, very close. 747, 743, 753, and of course, you know, Geekbench scores go up and down depending exactly on the person that run them. These are average scores that I've been looking at here. So really they're not much different. What really happened, and I did say this at the time of the launches of these of these processes, what really happened is they bumped up the clock speed. There were some changes, they made some microarchitecture changes, but really they bumped up the clock speed went down to the next nanometer process node, they were able to boost the clock speed. And really, if you actually look at it, the M1, the M2, and the M3 are really very, very similar. However, we can see a very big leap when we come to the M4. So even though it's running at 4.4 gigahertz, which in itself makes things, well, just the performance will be greater, we can also see that the actual performance in terms of the microarchitecture is much better. So certainly the M4 is a leap uh, in terms of 
uh, Apple's engineering, that leaped ARM v9. They've redesigned the CPU, they've redesigned the pipelines, they've redesigned the branch predictors, and they've upped the clock speed because they're now on this second generation three nanometer, and you've got this great performance regardless of the clock speed and including the new clock speed. And of course, we need to compare this to the Snapdragon X Plus and the Snapdragon X Elite. Now note, neither of these processes are actually available in laptops yet. We're basing our numbers on Qualcomm's numbers. And of course, there will be some real world testing coming about when these laptops uh, are released. Some will have passive cooling, some will have active cooling, some will be with the Plus, some will be with the Elite and so on. And I've covered this before in previous videos here on this channel. But what do we see? Uh, M1, this is a multi-threaded score. We don't really have the single threaded score, particularly for the uh, uh, Snapdragon X Plus. So we've got the M1, the M2 and the M3 here with their respective scores. Then we've got the M4 with the nine core version. This is the multi-threaded one. And that is just beaten by the Snapdragon X Plus with its 10 cores. Now, of course, as many people will point out that the nine core one is three performance cores and the rest efficiency cores, whereas the Snapdragon X Plus is all performance cores. So that does raise some interesting questions. You then got the M4 with a 10 core version. And then next you've got, and he's beaten by, the Snapdragon X Elite with the 12 core version. Again, noting that the M4 with the 10 core version is with performance cores and efficiency cores. The Snapdragon X Elite is with just performance cores. However, we don't know what the power efficiency of the Snapdragon X Elite processes are. So if they are able to pull off this performance with a similar power envelope, a thermal envelope, than the M4 does, even though it's got the two different types of cores, then that makes the Snapdragon X Elite an absolute winner. If it does it, but it's actually very, very power hungry, then that's gonna be a slightly different situation. However, in terms of overall brute performance in a mobile laptop type of device, then we can see the Snapdragon X Elite at the moment looks like the winner, but we're gonna to have to see what happens when they actually come out and see what the actual power performance numbers are. Okay, so just moving quickly to the GPU, it's a new 10 core GPU of the M4 builds on the existing graphics architecture of the M3. So basically, this is a tweaked version of the M3. For the iPad, that means you're getting dynamic caching now, which is this way of allocating memory dynamically. So you don't just say, well, here is, you know, two gigs of memory for the GPU. It actually goes up and down according to the GPU's new usage. You've got hardware accelerated ray tracing, hardware accelerated mesh shading. Now, all these things we found in the M3, they're now in the iPad. We're going to see them uh, later on in other M4 devices, but they've now come to the iPad. So the M4 GPU is basically an upgrade from the M3 GPU. And this is how uh, Apple presented that during the presentation. Okay, so quickly overall, we've got the M4 built on three nanometer from TSMC. For, you've got 28 billion transistors, hardware accelerated ray tracing, uh, AV1, uh, the 10 core CPU, GPU, you can see it all here. So uh, certainly for the iPad, this is amazing. Certainly for well, what we're gonna see in the future, predictions. Well, I'm just guessing, I don't have any inside information. I don't have any kind of leaks to tell. I'm just guessing here. There are of course gonna be some M4 variants, the M4 Pro. Now, could that be a 13 or 14 core with five or six performance cores, or maybe up to eight efficiency cores? Remember, they've added extra efficiency cores to the base M4, so that would be interesting. M4 Max, could we see even 18 to 20 cores with, again, eight efficiency cores? We, we'll have to wait and see how Apple stitch these numbers together, how they're going to do this configuration. And we are going to, of course, see this CPU in the iPhone, the A18, I would guess, now, Apple could leave it for another generation. They could carry on the A18 with what we've got in the A17. So that'd be the ARM V8 one. I have a sneaking suspicion they're going to bring this to the A18. So you get ARM V9 in the A18. But remember the last time they called it the A17 Pro. So does that mean we're going to get an A18 Pro? Maybe an octa-core for the first time. Maybe a 3 plus 5 setup. I don't think they've got enough wins in terms of performance power to make it a four plus four setup because those performance cores are uh, power hungry because of the performance they offer. So maybe a three plus five, that will be interesting. And maybe we're gonna get an A18 without the Pro, which goes back to the traditional six core two plus four. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but Apple clearly have scope here 
to do all kinds of interesting things, both in terms of MacBooks and in terms of the iPhone. Okay, that's it, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.